Okay, so we have six new reverends now, up to number 95. So uh, now is our first favorite part of this uh, ordination ceremony. We ask our new ministers to come up and say a few words about what this moment uh, might mean to them and just what they're guided to say. So let's call up now our 90th minister, Reverend Sharon Gustafson. Thank you. I wrote notes before I got here and I threw them away. I got up this morning and I made more notes and I threw them away. I was so inspired um, by some, some of the words that I heard and what brought me to the course is not important anymore. It, it seems to the world that it was um, a horrific, uh, horrible accident, grief, loss, and that's not what it's about anymore. It's a story. So as I think it was Kelly who said, as I stand here, I am ordained now. And I didn't get into this program to be a minister. I got into the program because I needed to be closer to God. I needed the dialogue. I needed that closeness. So I am so grateful to be here among you mighty companions. I am so grateful. And what spirit has in plan, planned for me, I don't know. But I'm willing and I'm open. And God bless us all. Okay, thank you. And now we can hear from our next new minister, minister number 21. Reverend Patricia, 91. I'm sorry, 91. I got promoted. <laughs> that would be a promotion, actually. That's what I said. I yeah, got promoted. Yeah. Okay, so minister number 91, Reverend Patricia Blanchard Heron. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about how my spiritual journey began, and mine started in the Catholic Church. Um, I was about 14, and my experience there was fairly positive. Um, I found a few priests who let me challenge them and debate with them, and um, everything went fairly well. I found Jesus, God, and what I needed, I got out of the church until one day a nice sister said to me, Ah, oh, Patty Blanchard, I see you're spending more time here. Are you thinking of taking the vows and becoming a bride of Christ? <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately found a quick excuse and ran for the door of the rectory because a nun was not how I envisioned myself. So anyway, um, that was uh, about another decade I traveled the world and... Um, a friend of mine, when I lived in Manhattan, said to me two things in one conversation. My father's getting married in a couple of weeks. Would you go with me as my date? And later in that same conversation, he mentioned, have you ever heard of A Course in Miracles? I had never heard of this book, but I just loved the title. So I found the book that day, and many of you may relate, but I stumbled through it for a couple of weeks on my own. <laughs> and then I went to the wedding. We were on a cliff in the New York mountains. I know I'm in California, so I use that term loosely, but um, I heard the phrase that they changed a little bit, and I know you all can quote it correctly, but I vow to never forget that God himself would be incomplete without you, they used in their vows. And that changed my life forever, and it's part of the reason why I'm standing here now, because I found out later it came from the Course, and it really sowed the seeds in me to find out more about this beautiful book. Um, I then spent the next few decades of years of my life trundling around the world. I had a rucksack, I waitressed, and that Course in Miracles book came with me everywhere. I wasn't a perfect, dedicated student, but I found a lot of opening and joy in that book. Um, I did tr uh, go into a church one day, a Unitarian church, and the minister there said, Yes, we study, we pray, but eventually we all have to get up off our mat. And that struck me because I thought, I've spent a lot of time with this book on my own, but I really didn't know how to put it into practice with other people. And that led me to find CMC on the internet. And I'm so grateful um, to be now a part of this family. I'm really grateful that it added a discipline to my study. 
with the Course in Miracles. I'm really grateful that it brought me to this group of people, to my study partners, who touched my life in a way that I can't really even express here, but I know that you know, <coughs> and everyone else here knows. Um, really grateful to Reverend Judy, two years of her guidance, always, um, always challenging us to move forward, always open to our points of view, and really, really um, brought a lot of growth to my studies. I'm really appreciative to my son Max there, who waited patiently for all my morning calls to be over. And he did a lot of the daily lessons with me, morning and night. And he always reminds me when he tells me how good the lessons make our soul feel. So I feel really blessed to be a part of this community and um, our new chapter in our life. I don't know really where we're going, but all I know is that it's time for me to get back on my knees and ask our Father, where would you have me go? And right now my guidance is to open up and make connections, and it echoes a lot of what everyone has shared with us earlier. So I'm here today, I'm in San Francisco. I'm stepping out in that vulnerable <coughs> space, and I know that the bruises or the falls are not my concern because I just remind myself I'm on a mission from God. <laughs> and I thank you all. Okay. And now we will call up here our new 92nd minister, Reverend uh, Michelle McNichols. So much. Everybody said to me at the beginning of the week, what are you going to say? And of course I don't know what I'm going to say. Even in my talks during the week on Facebook, I never really know what I'm going to say. I have a loose idea and then I run with it when I'm inspired. So this morning I woke up full of life, recognizing that I was one with everybody who had come before us as we all are. One with our teachers, one with Muhammad, one with Christ, one with everybody who's come before us. And in these moments, we're just a continuation of that same teaching. And there's going to be people ahead of us or later beyond us that bring the same thing. We're just the conduit. And I just felt so grateful this morning to be that life force, to be that person that was running that through me and bringing that love to the rest of the world. So thank you for the beginning of that life today. Thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, so, the next person that we're bringing up here, our next new reverend, is Reverend number 93, Reverend <laughs> Rachel Moore. Thank you. This is really surreal standing at the Community Miracle Center on Market Street in San Francisco. Seriously. <laughs> so <laughs> strange. <laughs> I always thought that the main purpose for a visit here would be a concert at the Fillmore. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy to be here. And I wrote that a week ago, but I am really, really happy to be here. This has just been the most fantastic trip with you all and with my girlfriend, Kristen, that came today. Um, my journey into A Course in Miracles started with my mother giving me a copy of the book 12 years ago. And then I uh, started with the ministry four years ago, just by an email. I didn't even, you know, when I, when I started with the book, I didn't even realize there were, of course, people out there. All I know is I picked it up and I loved it. And then all of a sudden I realized there's a whole community. And you guys were one of the first ones to send me an email. So I joined, uh, you know, this program. And uh, at this time, a lot of people could have made a case that it was a very dark time for me. I had made the decision to leave my husband of 17 years, and as you know, when you break up a family, it can be very difficult 
on many people, and it was especially hard on my mother. She had always perceived me as very responsible and strong and in control, anal retentive, but it was she was good at that. <laughs> um, so here I was leaving my husband, selling my home, and causing a lot of pain. And at one point, um, my mother, it was actually on a cruise, I'll never forget it, screaming at me that uh, she ruined my life by giving me the book A Course in Miracles. <laughs> and I, was, I happened to be in a perfectly good mood at the time because we were on a cruise. And I said, she obviously it didn't absorb it when she read it and uh, needed to go back and revisit the book because she was in so much fear. Of course, we all know that was just the Christ mind speaking to um, itself. Um, but for all the heat that I was experience, experiencing from many people during this time of letting go, I had always known that my husband, my children, and I were going to be okay. I really did deep down. I was stud I, you know, I'd been studying the Course and really trying to practice it. I understood that my erratic behavior was just a man. It was just a it was a spiritual, uh, spiritual battle within. Um, so to quote in, uh, A Course in Miracles here, when your behavior is unstable, you are disagreeing with God's idea of your cre creation. And I knew this intellectually, and I was just trying to internalize it. And I was acting out in many different ways, but at the same time, going very deep spiritually. Um, and it's at this point that I developed real trust. It was the beginning of real trust. And that's kind of what I want to be. I want to be a witness to you, my family, and my friends that this is real. During this time, I chose to let go of the facade and become the most authentic self that I could. And that required me to be very deeply honest with myself, very open, very vulnerable, forgiving in the face of a lot of attack. And I just practice it, practice it every day. And you know what happened? I didn't end up under a bridge <laughs> with, no, with no love because I had nothing to offer to the world. Instead, at every step of the way, I received what I needed for where I was at in my journey. The goal of this course is inner peace. I have learned when you see people as yourself and allow your mind to transcend the defenses, guilt, anger, and fear in any given situation, even at the risk of losing things that the world may value, respect, money, power, etc., you can't lose. God's gifts are priceless, and I appreciate that the Community Miracle Center was an integral part of this journey and these lessons, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you, Reverend Roxy. <laughs> I still have to get used to this. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank you. No, and you said 11.30 and it's not 12 something. What? Oh no, they won't deliver until 11.30, so he's on his way now. Oh, okay. 1.30, yeah. 1.30. 1 12.30. Oh, 12.30, okay. Somebody told me 11.30 and I thought maybe you needed to call somebody. <clears throat> okay, 12.30, we're still good. <laughs> Where's the pizza? We paste Where's ourselves. Where's the pizza? <laughs> Are you getting hungry? No, I just wanted to make sure that it was still coming since somebody told me it was coming and maybe you needed to call somebody. Maybe they had the address right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, our next minister, let me get the numbers right, is CMC minister number 94. She uh, was already ordained, so she was already Reverend Kathy Moon, so now I call her Reverend Square. <laughs> Um, so, let's call up our 94th minister, Reverend Kathleen Miguel Moon. Hi, y'all. I'm from North Carolina, and I don't actually talk like that because I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, in 1979, a very dear 
friend brought me uh, an article in Psychology Today entitled The Gospel According to Helen. And it was all about the Course in Miracles. And I was very excited. I was also profoundly clueless because the reason I was excited is I thought I could read this book, heal the sick and raise the dead, and save a business that I was in that was failing <laughs> drastically. And that's who I was then. But um, and it didn't happen like that, as you might imagine. <laughs> I um, started reading the books, and of course, it didn't make any sense to me at all. So I put them on my desk, and the business did fail, which was a blessing. And the books followed me wherever I went. I didn't really want them, but they followed me. <laughs> but finally, they started to penetrate. I met people, and I you know, had these divine appointments. And it started to penetrate, and sometime in the late 80s, I um, did the workbook, and I was so devoted. I carried a kitchen timer in my purse, and the ones that were 15 minutes, and the ones that were five minutes, I never, never missed one. And, and my life just shifted. The transformation was amazing, but I'm still pretty clueless. Um, so I went on, and, and um, I was not, uh, I didn't really feel very connected to God, even so, and I really, uh, I really didn't like Jesus. When I was a kid in church, I could not figure out how God made one perfect person and then messed up the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was, didn't feel like a friend. So all these years pass, and, and um, I end up signing up for this class with the Community Miracles Center. And... Um, got to know, know Judy, and the first year was, um, it was, it was wonderful. You know, I, I started to understand the text in a different way. But the second year is when it really came together, and I got really connected with my little group and with Reverend Judy, and um, life really shifted. I started, the closest person to me is my husband, and so of course he gets blamed for everything. And he sort of did just shift right before my eyes into this wonderful guy. And little did I know, it wasn't him, it was me shifting. So, you know, so I'm beginning to get a clue. I um, had a, a long spiritual journey along the way. I don't have a guru, I have a team of five, because that's what I need. Um, and so, standing here, really the only thing I have to say is thank you. Thank you. Reverend Judy, for your your love and your very direct but gentle uh, guidance, <laughs> and Yolanda for your um, your determination, your willingness to stay and live and grow in love and your faith. Yes, thank you. Mm. And Michelle, uh, just the most gentle heart of love. I really appreciate you so much. And Patricia, you're like my, so authentic and, and real and true to yourself. And you have all blessed me. Did I leave anybody out? <laughs> oh good, okay. <laughs> oh, and Marlis, and my beautiful dear friend Marlis, who I came here with me. We've just had a, a play time together. We've, talked for years and years but haven't seen each other and she came to support me and be here. Wow. And most of all, I'm grateful for CMC and that you're here, that you're from the west to the east and the north to the south and just expanding and spreading love everywhere. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we will have, uh, who will now have the distinction of being our most junior minister <laughs> until, <laughs> until we have our next ordination. Uh, and she's a, a wonderful person who um, has an amazing story of her life, as we all do. So I'd like to bring up here uh, CMC minister number 95, Lillian Yolanda Salte. There are so many words to say, yeah, but I'll try to find out 
what I, I want to say. It's the first time I travel with all my, my uh, uh, book and I forgot what I had to, uh, what I wanted to read and what I wanted to say. So I found out, okay, I'll let myself be, be led by, by the spirit and say whatever will come out. So I, I thank so very much uh, for, to Reverend uh, Tony, cause for many years ago, I received uh, uh, an email and he said that, okay, now we are opening for on uh, telephone courses and we can uh, have uh, reverends ordained after they go two years so, and with us and have this education. And at that time, we were living in Norway and I try to uh, get into these classes and he said no we can't because you are too far away it will be very difficult for you to stay up, up in uh, late in the night and I think we can we can forget about this and I was so uh, heartbreaking I said why I, I will do everything I can to, <laughs> to be with you no I think we we will go with this this time and my, uh, my chance come up after I moved over here to Iowa. And uh, mm. I said, I think it's time to try to see if I can get into these classes now and see if I can uh, have the, this class. And I made contact and very shortly after, um, I got into Reverend Judy's uh, um, class, and it was for 2013. And uh, I was so blessed to have them, have her and have Kathy and Patricia and Michelle with me. And it was, it was a, a very, very big support for me. So, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you, Life, for supporting me, you also, through this. And I can say that if I should have not had the support, and this time with ACAM, I would have never been here. These classes gave me the faith, gave me the motivation to, to live, even though the doctor says no. And that's why I consider myself being a, a miracle, because I, I did my what I had to do and the spirit led me further in my in my life. So now I embrace whatever it will be given to me and I really hope that I can find people to motivate them to find guidance, to find love, to understand that the truth is love. Yes. And thank you all for being here today. <laughs> <laughs>